uh, I find it's a mammoth task to reflect after the presentations that are that have just been made, which are kind of all very passionate and all very uh, I would call it engaging. They engage my mind from start to the end. I thought I would sleep in the process, but I did it. The issue of skills is critical. And being critical as it is, I just heard in the last presentation that perhaps we should start teaching our children from grade zero, introduce coding from grade zero. But does anyone here actually understand what coding is? Coding from Web Zero, many people here might not even understand what coding is. Have you ever coded? Right. So the issue is uh, we started by hearing from green hydrogen, and that's what I normally represent. Green hydrogen and the efforts that the country is going through, and the vision that is there is for Namibia to be one of the major producers of green hydrogen. And we need to develop the skills that are necessary as a university, as the University of Namibia. Our job is to develop those, those skills so that we can feed the needed uh, competencies by industry. And in that respect, is a response of UNAM uh, and response to the national board in this case for skills development for the green hydrogen research. We have established now a Namibia Green Hydrogen Research Institute. And through it, we have started already some capacity development programs where, for instance, in our partnership with an materials institute for research and train and, and, the, and the materials testing and research institute in Germany, we have already sent five PhD uh, candidates to be trained in hydrogen, in the compatibility of materials for hydrogen, let's say for storage or for piping and so forth. So five of them started already in June this year, with the hope that within five years, within three years when they finish they'll come back, during the which time we're expecting that some hydrogen will already start to be produced, we will also replicate labs that they are stuck in currently, so that when they come back, we are able to run this training also here in Namibia. That is already started. We are also thankful to the BMBF and through SASCA for the funding made available for the scholarships for master's programs and for TV programs. At the University of Namibia, we have 24 of those almost 60 master's scholars who receive scholarships from SASCA, where about 14 of them are going through the master's program in renewable energy and the rest are doing programs in either engineering or science, which are master's programs by research. We will already send our first student to Germany this year for their six month stay in Germany, who got their scholarship when they already in their second year of studies. We are looking forward that all the 14 students that are at, at uh, all the 24 students who are at UNAM will all go to Germany for a period of six months to be in a research institution where they are supposed to learn on the job and do their research as well in an establishment where hydrogen is being produced, utilized, value added, and so forth and hoping that these skills will be 
coming back to Namibia. For instance, for the scholars that have gone for the PhD, they will all they are all on contract. I think three or four of them are already UNAM staff members, so they are on staff development in that respect, and they are on contract to come back and work at UNAM when they finish for at least a period equal to the period that they have been uh, trained. So in that respect, we are looking at building the capacity for us to be able to build capacity in Namibia, where these people, all Namibians, are expected to come back and train other Namibians. Then, uh, talking about the oil and gas, I have to learn about oil and gas. I am used to running away from oil and gas, running to green to new planet. But we have the obligation as a university, or as universities, or as a country, to train and have to build the capacity needed for oil and gas is driving the economy of the world today, whether we like it or not. Whether we fear that there's the greenhouse gas emissions and so forth, yes, there is, there is, but that's what is driving the economy. And we should recognize that we cannot ignore oil and gas, and like we get the discoveries that have been found. If investment comes, this will be a huge transformative change in the Namibian, perhaps in the sub in this southern region, if we start to exploit those resources. Uh, the oil process. Coupled with that, of course, we have green hydrogen. Uh, I was just looking at one point today, just out of interest, how many refueling stations do we have in the world? There are so many, you will be shocked when people drive their car and fill their tank with hydrogen and drive away. But in the whole continent of Africa, there is zero today. And the, 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 chap, the, the article that I was looking at was saying that there was zero planned, zero planned refueling sessions. What are we doing and what are we doing to the future of our children, the future of our continent? So we look at all this and we have to build the capacity. And we are participating in this and making all the possible efforts in that respect. And I just Pick one of the things that I've read. Globalization of training is essential. We have to do it. Well structured and then capital development is a key for success. I'm picking this from the speaker that spoke before me here. And we hear that AI, artificial intelligence, and 4AI is an enabler in all the sectors of the economy. We have to really embrace this and include it in our trade. But talking about this, I would ask how many primary schools in Namibia teach computer science or computing at all? Or if computers that a student can go and click on a keyboard. So we need to change the way even the allocation of resources for this to happen. Even at our universities, sometimes when we had we during the COVID, we had to teach, all of us we had to teach online. It was a new challenge, but it helped us kind of leap from, you know, problems sometimes help us to learn quickly, to leap from. And now courses are being offered in joint mode. For example, both online and face-to-face. -face. And this is happening now. And we are thankful to, uh, to, to computer, computers and so forth. But I was just talking to my colleague, to talk aside when Professor Peters mentioned that was Chat GPT. I have never heard of that. I heard about it today. But I'm told and surprised that you can tell Chat GPT, write me a code on what, what, what. And the Chat GPT will write a code for you. And this is scary because it allows the person to say, write me an essay on the hydrogen. <laughs> and it will write the essay for you. And you can go and submit to a lecturer who doesn't know that there's GPG existing. <laughs> <laughs> and you get high marks, but empty in the end. Thank you very much for your attention.